Hey guys, welcome to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we're back with the patch 5.1 rundown. We haven't done one of these I think since patch 5.0 and that's basically because on the days that patch 5.0, A, B and C came out, um, you know, I've, you know, had busy days. Like I had to leave, um, like wake up at 6am and, and, and leave the house and I'm only back at like, you know, 11pm and stuff and there really wasn't any opportunity for me to make those videos. Um, and, you know, not too much point making it the next day, in my opinion. But, um, today, um, I actually don't have to, to have such a busy day, so I, we actually have time to take a look at the patch notes, and it just so happens it's of the big patch 5.1, so let's quickly just hop into it. So, first things first, uh, when the patch releases, um, on April 11th, um, it's, we're gonna have the release of Callista, of course, uh, it, it is a very exciting ADC, um, which is... Uh, I, of course, will be playing and making some videos on, so I'm really excited for that. Um, I do think that it's really short, the gap between Kindred and Callista. I think it's only like two weeks between Kindred and Callista being released, which is abnormally short, but I'm not complaining at all. Um, we're happy to have a um, new ADC to play. Wild Pass skin is going to be Fizz, and the new rank season, of course, is starting. The skin is going to be Braum. And there is going to be, of course, the new uh, event. I think it's the lore-based event, uh, which is going to happen the day following the patch, which is tomorrow. And I'm recording this like an hour before the patch um, supposedly goes live. Now, they always say that uh, it's on like 11 April at, you know, 12.01 UTC. But in reality, I found that the patches don't normally come out at 12 it comes out around like 4 a.m. or so majority of the time 3 to 4 a.m. most of the time so i don't know if this is actually going to be what happens but anyways the next rank season is going to start there's going to be the new uh, event the following day and on april 21st is going to be a um login event which is of course what we love login events don't have to do anything just get free rewards so gonna take a look at the champion changes so first one is Aesol so Aesol his um his um Stardust collection um I believe this is his passive but his Stardust collection from minions and monsters is ha getting half from two to one but at the same time um your monsters um cannons sieges and large monsters is going gonna go from three to five so in the grand scheme of things one wave used to have three I mean, it not used to have, but it still has three normal minions and one cannon slash siege minion. So, previously, you would get um, nine stardust from one wave. Now, instead, you are getting eight from one wave, which is not that big of a difference if you really think about it. So, it's kind of roughly the same, but you kind of have to focus more on getting the cannon minion or the siege minion. So, it's good. you're going to get punished more if you don't get that one. And... Aesol doesn't really take jungle camps in any way, so it doesn't really matter about the large, mon large monsters too much, but you really have to get the the big one in, in terms of the minion. So overall, it is just a kind of adjustment. I wouldn't really call it a buff or a nerf. It's just a small adjustment, maybe a minor nerf. So Fiora can now use her Q and her W together, which I'm surprised she couldn't already. Um, Jin... Uh, is getting a buff on his passive where your AD increase per level is going up from 4% to 4.5%. Now, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this was the one that it was like 3% and they buffed it to 5%. Jin became completely OP and they nerfed it to 4%. So now it's going to 4.5%. Um, I do think that Jin was in um, need of a buff. I do think he's not very strong at the moment. I wouldn't say he's weak, but he's just a mid-tier ADC, so he definitely could use a buff. So here we have the Master Yi... Um, kind of mini re rework and what this does basically is um so first up the main rework is on meditate so meditate uh can now be casted immediately between attacks to reduce severe damage so it's kind of like the the one where you tap meditate and um during the first 0.5 seconds you're gonna have 90 percent damage reduction so i believe what they want you to play mass e like is you attack people you see like um i don't know maybe an incoming jinx rocket you tap meditate block the majority of the damage from the rocket and then you go back to attacking something like that and not just meditate on the spot for like five seconds or or, or whatever the duration is um yeah so wuju style now res resets attack i thought that it honestly already did that like th i thought if you auto e auto it already resets your attacks apparently it did not but now it does so his um 
LT is getting a slight adjustment. Now, it, it's mainly the same, it's just a slight buff, which is that Meditate's cooldown gets reduced by 90% instead of 70%. The rest of the abilities still get reduced by 70%. So, overall, they, they said Master you got, got a mini rework, but it, it really is kind of about the same. Like, it, it's just a really slight change to Meditate, which uh, will only really affect the very good Master Yi players who know how to use Meditate correctly to block damage. But overall, it's, it is a, a, a buff. But it's just a slight buff. So Syndra now is getting an indicator when uh, uh, when she gets to hundreds um, splinters of wrath. Of course, having an indicator is very useful to know when you can actually ult. So this, I think, should have been in the game all along, but thankfully they're earning it now. Talon's Rake is now doing 70% damage to monsters. So last time they nerfed his bleed damage to monsters, clearly his clear is still a bit too fast. So they are reducing his clear speed for, um, even further to put him more in line with other... Uh, junglers, which I think does make a lot of sense. Uh, Urgot is a champion I underrated a lot. Now, in my last tier list, I had someone uh, in the comments um, did mention that Urgot was very strong, and I only fought Urgot like once, like uh, when that comment was made. But since then, I found that Urgot is like a staple top lane pick. Now you find it in every like few games, and I do agree with the commenter that Urgot is actually really strong. He's really tanky and really hard to deal with. So what are they changing? Well, they're actually just reducing his damage. So his AD per level is going down by 1. So he's going to get a total of like 14 less AD at level 15. And his passive, you can see the damage. Um, the AD ratio is still like the same. But the target max health ratio is going down by a little bit. Now, um, of course, if you're playing a carry, like if you're a mage or an ADC, this barely, does, this barely changes anything because you don't have a lot of health anyway. But... If you're playing like your top lane opponent, if you're you're like an enemy scion, Garen, Darius, or whatnot, and you actually have health, this change actually matters. Of course, it's getting reduced by 1.5% at the maximum rank. Um, now, I don't think this is a very major nerf to Urgot. I think Urgot is still really going to be really strong because the main issue with Urgot is not exactly how much damage he did, but it's more of how tanky he is because... Most of the time, you don't really have trouble escaping Urgot, at, at least for me. Um, the main problem is that I can't kill him. So, of course, if you can't kill him and then his damage starts stacking up, it's going to matter. But if you're running away from uh, if you're running away from him anyway, his damage is not going to matter too much. I think the, the, the part where it's a problem is how tanky he is. So I think, like, you know, we need, like, a health reduction or, like, a, 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 a um, uh, armor and magic resist reduction instead of a damage reduction, but... Is definitely a step in the correct direction. So Wukong, um, just getting some new text for his mini um, rework. I'm not going to cover this because this one is already out, it's already live. Zaya is getting um, quite a chunky buff. I'm not sure why. I think Zaya is actually in the okay spot right now. I don't think she's weak at all. Although she's not, or else she will almost never really be the strongest ADC because she's kind of like a counter towards engage. Um, but here we have the cooldown dropping on her W by like 2 seconds in all ranks, which is really lovely. The attack speed increase is going up by 10% at all ranks, which is again really lovely because Zaya now likes going for Conqueror instead of Lethal Tempo. So um, this is going to help her out a lot because you're getting more attack speed and for a lower cooldown. It's just a straight up huge buff. And then we have her E, which um, the base numbers are the same, but it's getting an extra 10% AD ratio, which again is a huge buff. So huge, huge buffs to, to, to Zaya in my opinion. Um, Zyra uh, is getting a buff as well. The enemy enemy's uh, ability damage is now going to only be 40%. So what this means is, of course for like champions like ADCs, this, this doesn't actually change anything. But on champions like mages, like for example if you toss a Ziggs Bomb or Oriana Q or whatnot, it's only going to do 40% of the damage. So it's going to make her plants a lot more tanky against mages. So this is definitely going to help Zyra mid a lot more. Uh, because she would have more mage matchups there, and Zyra ADC is not getting helped at all. So I'm, I mean, Zaya support, I'm Zyra support is not getting helped at all. Um, so I'm not sure if they want to move Zyra to the mid lane, because this is change kind of indicates that a little bit. But, but yeah. So next up we have, um, of course, all of the items. So there are a ton of um actual item changes here. So we only have one new item here, which is Terminus. So Terminus is a kind of a, a not ADC, but it's an on-hit um, kind of item. But you, you can build it on 
a lot of on-hit ADCs, but you can also build in other on-hit champions like Master Yi, for example. Um, so it does, it gives you 40, 80, and 30 attack speed, really decent stats, 3200 gold, pretty pricey item, built out of a recurve bow and a BF sword, and it deals 35% bonus magic damage on hit, which is pretty significant. And your passive, you alternate between light and dark when you attack, so when you get light stacks, it gives you 5 to 8 armor and magic resist for 5 seconds, and dark attacks gives you 10% armor pen and magic damage for 5 seconds, and it can stack up to 3 times, so this could be a total of 30% uh, armor pen and magic pen, and as well as a total of like, you know, um, 15, 15 to 24 uh, resistances, um, so it is a pretty strong item, and I think most people, mo not most people, but most uh, on hit champions are going to be building um, this as like a, a maybe first, second, or third item, because this is basically the armor pen item for on-hit champions. It's a really good addition to the game. And it could be because Callista is releasing, and this is like a, a core Callista item. But anyways, uh, Hullbreaker is being removed. I found this really interesting, because Hullbreaker is kind of an item where you kind of create an entirely new playstyle where it revolves around you split pushing. And this is like an extra win condition, extra way top laners can play. And um, I never really liked it personally because I'm an ADC main, but um, I do acknowledge that it is a win condition that does make sense. So I'm really, I find it really weird that they're suddenly removing the item out of nowhere. This is going to make split pushing harder for top laners, of course, which of course is good for me. But I think in the objective perspective of the game, I think that Hullbreaker is an okay item and it plays towards a really certain win condition. Um, but yeah, it is getting removed either way. So now we get into some item changes. Um, the Nina Sea Lodge Rod and Blasting One going down by 5 AP. I'm not really sure if those changes were really needed, but yeah. So here is the main bulk of the patch. The Light and Ruin um, item changes. So basically a ton of items are getting changed to light items and ruin items so <coughs> light items are basically more or less getting buffed in a sense that they generally are getting better but they're more expensive ruin items generally are getting cheaper um more but more risky and generally have cut some kind of drawback we'll get into that in just a bit so we're going to cover the light items first so Light items, first up we got Horizon Focus, cost going up by 300, more AP, more ability haste but no health. And essentially to cut a long story short, we're getting the PC version of Horizon Focus which I think is much better. So we don't have that apply one mark for immobilizing people, apply one mark for a certain distance thing anymore. Now, when you deal a damage to an enemy champion from over 600 units, you're going to reveal them for 6 seconds and increase the damage dealt to them by 12%. Now you can see already why this is going to be completely um, busted. You increase the damage you deal to them by 12%. So if you like full combo someone, all your damage is going to get amplified by 12%. So for instance, um, I, I don't know who has a spell that's more than um, 600 units. Let's say Ari. So Ari, if you start off with a charm, for example, and then you combo with everything else. All your other spells are going to do extra 12% damage. That's huge. Now, I think this is a pretty huge buff to um, to uh, Horizon Focus. I think a lot of mages are actually going to build this now. Um, and also, you get the reveal all enemy champions within the um, 1200 units of the target for 2 seconds. So you also kind of get a little bit of vision, which is pretty useful if you're just blasting um, you know, a spell into the bush, basically. Now, this is what I think is the biggest buff out of all the items, Infinity Orb. So, you pay an extra 300 gold, you get extra 10 uh, AP, and you are now getting an extra 10% uh, on the execute ratio. So instead of being below 35% health, it's now below 45%. So basically, when someone is below half health, you're basically just going to crit them. Now, this is insane. Like, I think this is going to be first item for a lot of mages. I think... Like, obviously, the assassins like Akali and Katarina are going to be having a field day. But honestly, I think that... Um, I'm going to assume that the 10... Uh, I'm going to assume that the 10 uh, magic pen is still there, even though it doesn't show it here. Or maybe it's not. Maybe the 10 magic pen is not there anymore. So maybe it's a, a bit more balanced than I thought. But um, I think that a lot of enemy... Uh, not enemy. A lot of mages are going to be building this as like a first or second item kind of situation. Like maybe it's Ludens into Infinity Orb every game. Or maybe it's, it's literally Infinity Orb first item. It could be. 
So, looks like a very strong item to me. Now, Harmonic Echo is getting an interesting change. Again, 300 gold increase, but now your um, heal on allies is going from 130 to instead 135 plus 10% AP, and every 10 ability haste you get extra 3% healing. Now, at first glance, this seems like just a straight up buff. You pay more gold to get more healing, and more healing is of course always good. However, when you really think about it, Harmonic Echo is a very common first item, so champions like Janna or Soraka, sometimes even Yumi and Lulu build Harmonic Echo as a first item, and if you're building it as a first item, the 10% AP is not really relevant because you haven't really scaled. The 10 uh, ability haste per uh, uh, every 3% th uh, per 10 ability haste also doesn't matter because you don't really have ability haste yet. So if you're talking about first item, you're paying an extra 300 gold for a first item. So at, on first glance, it seems like a buff, but it's also kind of a nerf. So it's a late game buff, of course. Like when you get like three, four items, it's definitely a buff. But if you're talking about early game, it's actually a nerf because you're, you're paying 300 additional gold, which is no good, uh, uh, of course. So it's kind of a little bit more balanced of a change, I think, compared to the, the rest. And this one has like kind of pros and cons. Rift Maker, 100 gold increase only. 10 extra AP, um, and that's because I think it, it hasn't really changed all that much. So now, instead of having 3 stacks of 3% for a total of 9%, you're now having 4 stacks of 2.5% for a maximum of 10%. So what this means is, if you're in combat for a shorter duration, you're actually getting less, but if you, are, if you manage to stack it up to the maximum, you actually get more, which is like 1% more. And 1% might seem like nothing, but um, it's like true damage, right? So extra 10% uh, damage and uh, of course like true damage later on is pretty insane honestly like I mean just think about mages now like you could be going for like like um, your Rift Maker, your, your um, Horizon Focus and your like um, and your um, what, what's the item called? Infinity Orb that's just absolutely insane just think about like maybe like an Akali like Akali can build all three of these items like I do see Akali building Horizon Focus, so you can go like Akali goes like Horizon Focus, um, Infinity Orb, and Rift Maker. Like, that's just insane. I don't know, Mages seem really, really strong right now, but yeah, so here, pretty um, okay buff to, to Rift Maker. Not huge, but not negligible also. So the Yomu's buff is pretty interesting. 200 gold increase, 50 movement speed instead of 40, not the most important, but you get extra 5 to 10 armor pen. So what this means is that. Yomus is pretty much always going to be first item, you know, um, first lethality item for people who build it. Now, Dustblade sometimes is the first item because it has more AD and more lethality, but now, with this change, Yomus is going to have more lethality than, uh, than Dustblade. So, Yomus is now officially the highest lethality item in the game. And the armor pen will, of course, last for 3 seconds um, after you break the momentum. So, yeah. Really good for assassins and whoever else uses Yomus already. It's just a stronger item overall. Now, Dawn Shot is getting an interesting change. 300 gold increase, but it allows you to heal yourself for the amount of damage that you did. Now, I think Dawn Shot is not a very good item in general. Not many people build Dawn Shot, and the healing on the item does make it better, but I don't know if this item is going to be very good at, at all. So, yeah, okay, so now we get into the Ruin items, and this is where it gets a little bit um, interesting. So the first item we have is going to be Death Cap. So Death Cap, you can already see how Ruin items go. So you can see Ability Power, okay, th this is not normal for Ruin items, but Ability Power is dropping by uh, 10. Um, here we have the AP increase. Instead of 20 to 45, we get 20 to 55. That's pretty huge if you think about it. But as a drawback, you're going to get the Sinner's Passive. Reduces your base health by 10 to 100. So you're trading health for more damage. Now, on one hand, you could argue that on carries, trading health for damage is not horrible because you want more damage anyway and you shouldn't be getting attacked anyway. But when you really think about it, health is so important for carries because it, it's literally the only thing that keeps you alive, right? Because, of course, having extra 100 health when like an assassin jumps on you may not matter because you're going to get one shot anyway, but on some other occasions like you're in intense 1v1 against the other ADC as an ADC for example, that 100 health could matter. So again, it's just a trade-off. Um, I think mages have no choice but to build death cap 
I don't think there is a world where mages don't build Death Cat, but there is a world where ADCs don't build Infinity Edge. We're gonna get to that one a little bit later on. But next up we have Bork. So here is the general what a general um, ruin item looks like. Um, you get uh, cost reduction, so 200 gold cost reduction, a little bit more stats, so like more physical vamp here, and uh, more movement speed stolen here, and you get, of course, that usual um, base health loss of 10 to 100. So this is kind of a little bit more standard. Now the way that they see it is, uh, Death Cap is the keystone item for like mages. Um, Bork is kind of like a, a, a the keystone item for like uh, on hit builds. And of course we have IE, the keystone item for crit ADCs. So same treatment, 200 gold less. Your crit damage is, in, instead of dealing um, 205 to now, um, uh, those, so it used to be 175 to 205, but it's now 175 to 225, so that's an extra 20% damage. Now this is pretty huge for ADCs, honestly. Mm -hmm. The extra damage here, but you're losing the health. So, the question is, is is the extra damage worth the health? Now, I, I cannot answer you this right now in this video, but we have to test it out, and I think there is a world where the health loss is just too much, and IE is not going to be worth it to build. But there is another world where the, the extra loads of damage you get from IE could be worth the health you lose. So we'll have to see. So next up, we got Twin Guard. So now Twin Guard, I think, is getting a pretty massive buff to tanks. Um, so the cost is the same, but now instead of having to stack it to 5 stacks, you only have to stack it to 3 stacks. Now that is a huge buff. Like stacking it for 5 seconds versus like 3 seconds is absolutely huge, right? So now instead of getting 30% increases to resistances, you're getting 35% and even, again, another big buff. And the drawback is reducing your AD by 1 to 15. So... On tanks, this does not matter at all. So this is a huge just buff buff to tanks. The question is, of course, you can't really build it on carries anymore like ADCs, although you didn't really build this on ADCs very much anyway. But the main question here is bruisers. So think of champions like um, like Wukong, like Darius, uh, for example, who who are tanky, but they still want damage. All right. So this is kind of a, a nerf for them because reducing your AD by 15... Um, at like later levels is quite a lot so I think it's a huge buff to tanks with like almost no drawback but on fighters it is kind of a, a little bit of the same situation as like the death cap and the IE kind of situation Warmonks um, it's pretty interesting like no one really builds Warmonks anyways but it, to tanks again this is a huge buff because now the threshold increases by quite a bit more but instead it triggers after 4 seconds instead of 6 uh, which is not going to be a problem if you're on tank anyway because you're going to have a lot of health and you're going to get 0.3% uh, max health per second regardless uh, even without triggering this so again it's kind of a buff for tanks because you're going to get the the the, the, um, the AD reduction but again it's kind of a nerf on fighters so Sterex is getting a pretty interesting change which is when you proc lifeline it's going to instantly cleanse you. It's going to remove all crowd control effects on you except airborne. Uh, when, you, when it gives you the shield. And it's going to give you more tenacity but for a shorter duration. Now I think this is fine because I think 4 seconds is long enough to get yourself out of whatever situation you are in or to maybe win the fight. So I think this is actually an overall buff. You're, this is a movement speed by 5 which I think it, out of everything it's kind of the least offensive... Um, drawback I guess you could say so now we're gonna go into some new runes so first up we have uh, a new keystone um, okay first up I'm gonna cover Kraken Slayer is removed right so this is supposed to replace Kraken Slayer it says keystone empowerment but it, this is basically press the attack in PC where when you attack uh, enemy champion three times in a row you're gonna deal a, a, a little bit of bonus damage and increase the damage they take by 8% so this is very single target focused uh, mainly taken by ADCs or taken by fighters in the top lane. Um, yeah, so basically when you're vulnerable, you deal extra damage, you know, th th that kind of deal. So, this is different from Kraken Slayer because Kraken Slayer can be pronged on multiple people and hit no cooldown, whereas this one only pronks onto one person and has a cooldown, so it's very single target focused, a lot more lane focused. So, we'll have to see 
um, how strong it is in the gameplay itself, but I think it's a pretty solid rune. Now, Arcane Comet is a new keystone that basically is a little bit like airy, but it can be dodged and it does more damage. So basically, when you damage a champion with an ability, it's going to shoot a comet to their location. When it hits the champion, the next comet damage increase. So basically, the damage scaling goes off of how many comets you've already hit. Um, yeah, here total hits on champions. Of course, it scales with your AD and your AP as well, because this can be, of course, taken by AD champions as well, but it's more commonly taken by mages. Now, traditionally in League PC, this is a really good laning rune, but the thing is that in Wild Rift, laning phase is basically like 5 minutes, and there, and laning is not really, like, uh, poke and laning, uh, like lane bullies and stuff is not really as important because the lanes are short in Wild Rift, and laning phase is... I mean, unless you die like three, four, three times, six times in laning phase, laning phase is not really very important mm. in terms of poke. So I don't think Arcane Comet is going to be that good of a rune unless its damage is so insane that in late game it does insane bulks of damage. So yeah, we have to see about that as well. So we have two new minor runes. Uh, first one is on the resolve tree. We got uh, a tes tenacity rune. So you gain five percent tenacity and more tenacity based on the number of enemy champions nearby. Uh, this is basically to kind of replace the Merc Trance passive that a lot of people lost and it's mainly only going to be used on tanks because the enemy team, enemy champion has to be basically right next to you to get the extra tenacity so you can't really go for this on mages or marksmen because enemies won't be so close anyway. Pretty good addition and we have Psychic Wave uh, where the next attack on the enemy champion deals and uh, creates an explosion to deal adaptive damage to nearby champions uh, under the domination tree. Uh, it's it's all right, I I guess. Like domination tree is relatively an underwhelming tree. Like pretty much, it's only sudden impact that's good. Like the domination tree in general is just not very good in uh, at all. So, yeah, I don't know where this is gonna go in the tree, but it seems all right. Empowered attack is getting a pretty minor change, but it's actually pretty huge. So first up, the cooldown is going from ten to eight seconds, and secondly, the the big part. <coughs> excuse me, is the fact that it's only gonna proc against champions. So, against champions basically means that there is two significant factors here. So number one, this is a lot better for laners. Because you're not going to proc it on minions by accident, you can only proc it on champions. So that's a buff for laners. But it's a nerf for junglers because you could proc this on jungle camps to make your clear faster. So you can't use this on junglers anymore. So yeah, it is a buff for laners but a nerf for junglers. So... Gameplay, there's going to be a new Ixtali Scorpion in the alcove in the Baron lane, and when you can basically stand on it to summon it, and it's going to help you. It's basically an extra minion that's going to help you to push and deal damage to enemy champions. Um, and yeah, it's just an extra gameplay mechanic. I, I don't know, don't really have too much thoughts on it, especially since I don't play Baron lane, but it's, it's basically just summoning an extra minion. I think probably what's going to be more significant is... It's going to create an objective in the top lane for Baron lanes to fight over. So when, ex example, you see your opponent walking towards the alcove to summon the Scorpion, and then a fight is going to break out. So I think that that's probably going to be a bigger impact than actually the Scorpion being summoned itself. The bigger impact is probably going to be champions trying to fight to summon the Scorpion. So that's kind of funny that, that that's probably going to be like the bigger change. So Slow Resist, they just changed some systems on Slow Resist. And also on the long ability range display. Strategy panel now opens the scoreboard by default, which I think should have always been the case anyway. Like, if I go to the scoreboard to check my rune damage, I don't want it to go back to the rune tab the next time I open it. So this is great. And this weird, weird thing, two weird things, where the first one is like some smart quick chat messages, where apparently it's going to see the situation and recommend some quick chat messages. But um, I don't know if this is going to be intrusive. Like, if it's only going to appear in the menu, this is fine. But if it's going to just like pop up at the top of your screen, that's going to be irritating. But I think it's all right. Um, Alright, change provided is not irritating. And then we have new flash combo toggle. I have no idea what this does because like when I think of flash combo, I think like for example, a E flash by Ari. And how can you really come up with a toggle for that? Like, am I gonna toggle on that I want to do a flash combo and it's gonna make it easier to do it for me? I don't know what this does, but we're gonna have to see what this does. So Soul Fighter skins are coming out when the patch releases, as is the, the fist skin, and of course Braum is gonna be out the next day. So, yeah, uh, a lot of bug fixes as well. And that's pretty much it for this video. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and goodbye.